Hello everyone, so I wanted to show the unboxing but uh, I was excited so I already opened this electronic load here box so it comes in this kind of plastic it's out of a box and this will be sitting here and here and there are some accessories and power supplies so I'll get this out of the way what we have here is a the accessory that you can plug in here into these terminals so just like that and then you tighten the screws and you get here like Type-C connector, micro USB, mini USB and a battle jack here for or like if you have a power supply that's like this it says here 5 volts but I'm not sure if that's the case it's, you can do anything basically any power supply that you have here and this is I believe uh, I'm not sure what's the maximum voltage that this can support but normally I bought this for testing batteries so you got a battery, a 10S battery, 13S battery, so 36 volts, 42, 48 volts, 60 volts, and you want to test their capacity. Uh, so this is very handy. I actually have a really big ass battery that I'm interested in testing. So we'll see if this is capable of doing that test. It all comes uh, with a box and all also these accessories so that if you're not using this then this is what you're gonna use you need to match this is like easy to connect with the battery plus or minus so you would probably use this step so we have these uh, plug here they do plug here and they come like in this split like a uh, terminal here and you have a crocodile on the other hand on the other side to Connect to whatever it is you need. And then here you have a micro USB cable to plug in this probably to your PC. I believe this is like you can upgrade the firmware and connect to Bluetooth and whatnot. I'm gonna have to check the app for this. Uh, what else do we get? We have a probe here, and I believe it connects here so that if anything gets hot, this will. Uh, to like uh, stop the test or something like that. I believe that's what it is. This is for. I haven't read the manual. I'm just checking here by myself. And we have the power supply that comes with this guy. So let's go ahead and actually like put this set. Uh, also the manual is here. So I haven't read the manual yet. I'll probably do in later on. So this power supply is 12 volts, one amp. That's uh, it's not a big one. A powerful one, no matter. Okay, so as soon as you plug in the power supply, it turns on. It turns on, and you saw the fan. We have Bluetooth. You can use Bluetooth if you need to. And then we have the temperature. I'm not sure if it shows the temperature. Yeah, it actually does. We have here 30, 30 C. If we unplug it, what do we get? We're gonna get some random value. In there. Still showing the same value, probably low temperature. But now it's fixed at 30. What when you plug this? Maybe if I hold it between my fingers. Uh, I'm not sure if that raises or not. It doesn't seem to do much difference in here. I don't know why. But uh, we're gonna have to figure that out later. I believe you either put this on the electronic mode itself or probably on the battery. So if it's, things get too hot then you you tell it to stop this charging or charging whatever. I'm not sure if this this thing does charging. Anyways, we're gonna see. What does it say on the manual? Color screen, Bluetooth, digital transmission, digital control cover load, mirror, user. That doesn't say much in the title at least. So we have the start, if we click start, we have the voltage, cutoff voltage is below 9 volts. So you can set the cutoff voltage depending on your battery or your testing parameters. And we have the setup here. So you can see here we have the IS, so the sourced, sourcing current. You can increase that to amps or decrease it. And that's the milliamps right there. 
and that's all you can do here with this setup here. But if you press and hold, you get constant current. Let's say constant resistance, I believe. Constant power, constant voltage, constant current. Oh, this is a nice section. All right. And then you have that. You can set the time discharge. You can set the cutoff voltage. So, yeah, for example, if you are just testing a like, little mine cell, you can just like uh, set this to 3 volts, maybe 2.5, 2.8 volts, depending on how are you going to use that cell. And then, what else can we set here? I think that's all. Now we're back to. So you can set the mode, the dead time discharge, the cutoff voltage, and the, the parameter that we have here, either be it current or resistance or whatever. Alrighty, that yeah, looks nice. If we click on start, oh, that gets us to the menu. So that's Chinese, that English. If you want to scroll, you can uh, go through various settings using the setup button. This is the brightness of the display. Standby brightness, wait, standby. Into standby time, 60 seconds, so one minute, and then it goes to standby. Temperature corrections. Uh, if you have like another meter, you can set like the Correct that temperature that you have right now. Overpower. I'm not sure what this does if if it's like uh, you exceed 180 watts, it, it doesn't work, something like that. Default settings. You click on default settings and it goes back to default. And then you can exit. That's pretty much it. We have a buzzer in here. We have probably this is the antenna for the Bluetooth, and the Bluetooth symbol is here blinking. So, I mean, I think it's ready to pair. We have our fan with the heatsink here, and I kind of like uh, the PC cooler. And uh, below that, it looks like a single MOSFET or something like that. You know, you have a bracket, yeah, you can see here the symbol of that. It says above 36 volts, please pay attention to safety. These are both plus and current and voltage, yeah, it's basically the same. And here, the minus connections. And this part, as I said, I believe it was for is for firmware or some other like uh, functionality. Okay, everyone. So here we are testing this electronic load that we've got. I've got my e-bike battery here hooked up. Normally this is a 13s, and the last time I like upgraded this. Normally it's designed for 10 amp hours, and it was degraded. So I really like uh, modify it with 2000 milliamp cells so there are five of them so it should be around that same capacity 10 amp or 11 amp hours because they are slightly more than 2000 and yeah so I've been using it since uh, but now it has degraded like about 20% or 25 so I'm keen to use this uh, electronic load here to confirm that and really test the electronic load as well uh, so yeah, it's pretty much it because I like uh, right now I was getting like 40 kilometers or so now I'm only getting 30 so it's around 25% in in range uh, so I'm gonna check and probably confirm that with the capacitor test so I'm gonna turn the key here in order to uh, turn the battery on you'll see the right away the voltage so it's fully charged for 54.4.6 something normally it's 0.6 yeah, that's close enough. So we're gonna select our current here. Uh, I can go to I can go two amps and see. But first we need to reset like the this is like our last measurements from another battery. So we have we have here clear cumulative data. We're gonna select that. And that's it. So now we have all set to zero. We have the sync uh, synced current. Uh, it's two amps now. Uh, two amps times fifty-four. That's uh, 
that's about 100 watts so we can go a little bit more I think 3 amps is good so and then the th we need also to change the threshold voltage to about I need to calculate that so but it's higher this is 13 times 2.5 all right so we've determined that cutoff voltage should be 32.5 okay let's set that 32.5 that's 2.5 per cell I'm just gonna increase it a little bit to 33 mm, right, let's just leave it 32.5 that's good let's uh, start and see I'm using these just screwdrivers this is not the proper way but this is all I could do or what I could find to in order to uh, stick this crocodile to that so yeah that's what I'm doing so let's click start so yeah we are at 160 watts so we're below the 180 watt over uh, power threshold so we're gonna let this run for until it's done and then we'll see how much capacity we have remaining all right that's it okay everyone so the test has been completed it's only showing like 6000 milliamp hours or 294 watt hours which is uh, lower than uh, what I expected and it only took like two hours two hours to complete we can uh, restart again and see if there is any energy left in here so of course it keeps the data here we can see the voltage is about 9 volts uh, I'm not sure why is that probably because of the BMS and if I turn the key off and then I'll turn it back again okay so it's as if the BMS deactivates everything so now we're getting 47 volts back again let's uh, restart the test and see if it has any energy left or the BMS will shut off again so here we are it's at 46 volts and we are pulling about 140 watts at 3 amps. It shouldn't take much to reach again the cutoff voltage and then, or maybe the BMS will cut off again. I think it's related to the BMS, I think. But, anyways, we'll see. Okay, guys, so there wasn't much, like, didn't add much, and now it shuts off again. And again, we are below 9 volts, so we're definitely below 32, so we can't, can't uh, resume the test. So, 36 volts, uh, I believe that's all we can get. So, yeah, so it shows 300 or more or less 300 watt hours, uh, which is like a uh, six amp hours i expected something like seven or eight but uh it's okay i mean that's great uh, so yeah now we know like the kind of real capacity that we still have on our battery and i'm really not sure if the bms in my battery here is shutting off before like it should be or if the temperature on the battery increases or something because like when you turn it back on it's still like at 47 volts I would expect something below 40 volts but I'm not sure what's the threshold voltage for the BMS maybe the cells are not well balanced and then it cuts off so that could be a reason uh, probably we're gonna might need to disassemble it or something recalibrate the cells but anyway so we had the chance to test our electronic load here and also the chance to know the kind of somewhat the real capacity on our e-bike battery here so yeah that's that's the DL24 uh, I don't 
electronic load. This is just like the basic, really obvious level electronic load that you can get, and it's one of the cheapest, or the cheapest. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's great. It's good for, for what I needed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.